Welcome to the Life of Leisure Show. I'm your host, Nick Leisure, alongside my co-host, Anthony V. Yes, yes. Kelly Bay. And the infamous Demetrius, a.k.a. the specialist. Okay. Tonight in the producer seat, we got Kelly, a.k.a. What's Kels. What's up, What Kels? up, Kels? Shout out to our sponsor, Get a Clue Clothing at 1050 20th Street. Former NFL linebacker for the Cincinnati Bengals. You know him as the Mad Backer. Because he had that quick shoulder that just crushed <laughs> anything in his path. <laughs> Joining us today, Adrian Ross, everybody. Yeah. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah. Big yeah. guy, what up, man? Oh, nothing yeah, much, man. seen you in a while, man. Exactly. Always yeah. good to see family. Yeah. yeah, definitely. How you get so big, man? Was your dad big? Was your dad from Wakanda or something? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, we got that vibranium definitely up there. You know? Was he a football player? Yeah, he was a football player. He played for the uh, Niners and the Broncos. Okay. Yeah, so that's so, where you got the size from. Yeah, the Rosses were pretty big. You know, I didn't – I was kind of the, the runt of the boys. What? You know, so I was skinny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, you were I was, the runt? Yeah. Yeah, wow. my older brothers are bigger than me. Mm. <laughs> Did they play too? Uh, yeah, they played at uh, Hampton in college. Okay. Yeah. But they didn't go to And Hampton. my oldest one, he was All-American. He was supposed to go, but, you know, he, you know, got someone pregnant, thought he was too mm. good. So mm. that's how I was able to make it. You know, mm. because I, I had the examples of what not to do. Okay. Yeah. So you was playing, like, from birth. You came out with the football, huh? There it is. That's the story right there. You know, I mean, it's, it sounds it's pretty crazy, but when you look back on it, that's exactly what it is. Everything, when I was growing up, I used to just write books. Everything was about football, football, football. And my parents were teachers. My dad's a principal. Okay. My mom's a teacher, so my mom, as I started to get older, they were like, stop writing about football. Stop, <laughs> like, you know, get off football, get on education, get on education. So, you know, I was solid in that part, too. So it was kind of cool because I got to get it all the way around, you know, and got an academic scholarship to Colorado State. Okay. And that's what enabled me to continue on to play football. So you know? growing up, did, was that like your favorite sport or did you have something else that you wanted to do? Oh, my favorite sport is basketball. Okay. You know, I'm just, I was just good in the football. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was good. That was a job. So you, know? you didn't get a college scholarship for football. You got it for academics. Yeah. And yeah, I got you, it for academics. And then you joined. That's you went to Colorado that. State? Colorado State, yeah. Okay, so you went to Elk Grove High? Elk Grove yeah. High, yeah. Okay. Were you born in SAC? Or no, I, I'm born in San Jose. So, San Jose. you know, we, we moved all over because, you know, my dad coaching – getting done playing and uh, being an assistant principal, being an assistant principal, being a, you know, principal yeah. here and there. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we moved around a lot. <clears throat> then uh, they're really from Texas. So we moved back to Texas for a couple of years. And that's actually where I started to play football at. Mm. So and I then, had that Texas foundation first. So when did you come to Sacramento? Uh, so right after we moved from Texas. So like in 85, like when the Kings first got here. I lived here in Sacramento for two years and played for the Sac Vikings. Oh, okay. Then we <laughs> South Sac Vikings. South Sac Vikings. Uh-oh. So you was what, like maybe like ten or something like that. Yep. yep. Ten years old. Yep. Ten years okay. old. And then you went to Elk Grove High and played football there. Then we moved back to San Jose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so oh. we went back to San Jose. And I went to junior high there, and then we moved to Elk Grove for mm-hmm. high school. So that's when that's when I moved to Elk Grove and. Were you that big in high school? No, nah, I was skinny. You're I was. Skinny? You I was started hitting the weights and everything. In and San Jose, I was on the C basketball team. I was on the five two and under basketball team. Damn, that's <laughs> fucked up. Five I two and under. You know, they gave yeah, you a height five, limit. Two and under. See, guys don't be hitting their growth spurts till like after <sighs> high school though. Exactly. And that's exactly how it was for me. It was. Mm-hmm. So then I got to El Grove. Demetrius Grove. still ain't here. I'm, I'm waiting for my third. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I rent my horoscope. and said, I got a, a, a growth spurt coming in about two weeks. <laughs> 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 Don't give him no shoulder over there, man. He's going to end up in the kitchen or somewhere. <laughs> I'm dislocated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you went to El Grove and then went to Colorado State. Right. Yeah, I mean, after we whooped ass, you know, Elk Grove, you know, we whooped everybody's Dirt. ass in the area. Oh, I mean, I guess, I guess we didn't grant. I guess grant, I'm about to say grant I left my pacer us. hat in the car. Man. Yeah, you know, grant, <laughs> grant, grant got us, you know. So props, props grant. to the Pacers. Grant you know, had a lot of football players though. Yeah, definitely. You know, like they had a squad and uh, the city in general, though, right? 
Think of all like the football players, just athletes come out this city alone. It's a lot. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. Sacramento's definitely a hotbed. You know, uh, especially I mean even even now even even more so now we're getting a lot of you know players that are in these big conferences that are that are really known. Uh, you know, and I think they're starting to get their due now as well. Are you real um, in tune with the high school scene? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I I, I try not to be because it's you know football. I mean, being an agent now, you know, I'm watching so many. And college so you like games. the Rock? From, from no, the Rock ballers. is like me. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I like you that know, show, like Ballers, he's, man. He's pretending, and I'm I'm okay. I'm the real Strasmore, whatever <laughs> there it is. whatever his name is. You know, he he played DN in Miami. I played DN in Colorado State. He he tried to make it to the NFL. I made it to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Damn, okay. I'm an agent. He, he, everybody thinks he's one. What year you know did what I mean? you make it to the NFL? Ninety eight or something? Yeah, ninety eight. Ninety eight. Were you drafted or was nope. it? Nope. Free no? agent. Same Free. same path I had to do when I came out of high school. So you had to work to get there. Huh? That, that's that's why I knew it was gonna happen again. Because if I wouldn't have had it from high school to college, you know, I don't I don't know how I would have looked at that situation. But it was like. You know, everybody thinks it's about the players, you know, mm-hmm. about how good this player is, how good that will. Scouts are sorry, sorry as hell, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't know what the hell they're doing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Tom Brady was a six rounder. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like the league uses their own measuring stick and they make it be like our method is so good. And it's like we see every year. No, it's not. <laughs> right. yeah. You know what I mean? Like general managers and people are getting fired. But. The megaphone is always on the players. It's always, oh, mm-hmm. so-and-so wasn't good enough. Well, we saw that in college. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? It goes back to, like, the <laughs> Tebow thing. You know, well, Tebow was a – you know, I, I felt he was a successful college quarterback because he had that kind of little bit higher than high school leadership. He could do the rah-rah, and then, you know, he has heart, and, you know, and he's a gamer. I mean, you know what I mean? He's mm-hmm. a guy that's going to work hard. He hella Everybody, big. He's big. Hella He's big. hella big. So, so <laughs> one of my old coaches, Urban Meyer, who's the coach up at Ohio State now, you know, was his coach at Florida. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere Urban went, they've won. You know what I mean? So, so Tebow happened to be there with him. But okay, Urban's winning at Ohio State. Yeah. Urban won at Marshall. You know, but they'll say, oh, the quarterback, Tim, Tim Tebow had. 22 other dudes on his team that made the NFL. Mm. So was it Tebow? Yeah, they still, still there too. Still saying, but yeah. Tebow gets all the credit. But isn't it like a lot of the people on the you know, in the NFL that control the money, they, they the owners. Don't really don't know that much about the players. That or they don't just get that involved, right? Oh yeah. Like they just they're just worried about the business side of it. Definitely. They're not really focused on like I don't know. Yeah, Maybe I mean me. I mean you figure most of the most of the owners have some other business. Like, mm-hmm. the game is like their hobby. Yeah. You know, and you see those teams where, like, they make money doing other things. It's like Mark Cuban with, with the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's like, your homie, because like, I always see him coming out for your events and stuff. Yeah. You know, so that's that's something. Like, he has all these other businesses. Um, He's on that Shark you know, Tank. Yeah, Kraft. Shark Tank. <laughs> you, you know, like the, like the Patriots owner, Kraft. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, like with Kraft cheese and all that other. Oh, shit, he got a whole aisle at the store. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then you have but then you have the Steelers and you have the Bengals Heinz. where it's family owned. Like, that's their business. Mm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Is that why? I mean, so you didn't get drafted. So how does that work? Do you just go in and apply like you apply for Subway? No. It's, like a job? Um, like, I want to work. I want to play for the bank. No, nah, they still come <laughs> get you. You know, like, uh-huh. they're still, they're calling you during the draft as well, you know. Uh-huh. Like, you figure there's yeah. a lot of guys, uh, I don't know what year it changed, but there used to be, like, 12, 15 rounds, oh, right? Yeah, so, yeah, these yeah. guys were drafted, but it's like they were, you know, when I played, there was only seven. Okay. You know, so so there's a lot of people. Oh, I was drafted, and it's like, okay. Well, you were drafted in the twelfth round. Well, mm. you know, versus where mine, there was only seven. Mm. Yeah. So there's still so many players that have to fill a roster and that that are out there that the league wants to test out. All all, all the draft is is where you what and what you're getting paid. They they just don't get that shine, like in the beginning, right? Like, oh, we're drafted. No, they just don't drafted. get that money. 
and the money. True. Yeah. Who cares yeah. about the shine? Yeah. Like you, you know, like here for the check. That's that's it. Like so, yeah. my my second year, I wasn't drafted, and I beat out a first round pick. Mm. I'm getting shine, but who cares? Like he got three million. But then you came in and started, <laughs> you came in and started smashing people. But like, he got three million. Yeah. See what I'm saying? So that's why I started learning. It's about your value. I'm smashing people whether I was getting three or the five thousand I got. Mm. See what I'm oh, saying? Mm-hmm. So that's why it's important. That's why I'm saying it's important for these 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 young men and women in college to get paid so they understand their value. Mm-hmm. The college is actually blinding them and the parents saying that. Th- the scholarship's the value. Well, the scholarship is the value if I take my ass to class and I study <laughs> and I do everything else. Yeah. Right. Right? That has nothing That's to do that has nothing to do with the sport. Yeah. Then when I'm an athlete and you throw me on ESPN for three hours and Fox and everything else for three hours, well, I'm watching everybody else. I'm like I'm watching the kids on Disney Channel. They're students and they're getting paid. Yeah. Why do these students that physically perform just like all the other entertainers. Why are you saying because they're a student they can't make money? Yeah, yeah. and it's crazy <laughs> because uh, the coaches, some of them coaches, are getting massive mega checks. deals. Yeah. Well, well didn't Northwestern uh, up in Chicago? Don't they pay their players now? I thought they had a thing about that where they they petitioned it and they, they tried won. and then yeah. they shut it down. Yeah, don't I don't they? think I was gonna say I never heard that that went through. Yeah, no. it was like, I mean, it go away. It don't it happen some type of form where they're like, hey, here goes an envelope full of bread. Go buy some shoes. But that's yeah. the problem, though. You know, it's <laughs> Shut like, the fuck up. It's, <laughs> right. Is when there's something that's messed up, you have to go about it the right way. And everybody's only talking about the college pain. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying, damn the college. It's the networks that need to pay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but cool. they're, they're paying somebody though, right? Because the coaches right? are getting there money. You, there you go. What about like a, right. a school like Notre Dame? How they always get played on that one channel? Oh yeah, because so that's they, some type of deal they got going right yeah, there. And they're, on, they're on NBC every. That's why every Notre Dame game is on TV. Yeah, every every game is on TV because they have a contract. So, how did you get the Mad Backer? Name. Who gave you that? Yeah. Name? That haircut Mad he backer, had. Man. I know. Man. What was up orange. with the crazy hair? Too, man? You had the orange stripes and the. Like, was that the team that you just grew up wanting to play for? No, nah, the um, the Mad Backer came about is basically like the Incredible Hulk. You know, it was mm-hmm. it was it was, it was it's just like an alter ego that um, that that the linebackers gave me. You know, I was a guy who like. I like fairness and just, you know, so I always tried to play the game like textbook wise, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, me against you, mano y mano. Mm-hmm. And then if then if a guy holds me when I'm doing better then the ref doesn't call it or if, you, you know, finna, anything finna starts, like it's like I start turning into into something else. Oh, OK, y'all want to play like that? And so you could tell when I would do that. So the guys in practice, they'd be like, uh-oh. Angry black man. Uh, they'd be like, there you go. They'd be oh, like, they go to Mad Backer right there. Uh-oh, Rostin turned into the started, Mad Backer. Started turning orange, right? <laughs> That's to turn his hair orange. <laughs> Just came out and started smashing people. Because you look up Adrian Ross, and you look mm-hmm. at the old plays, man. All you see is him, like, running people over. <laughs> like, do they have, like, stats on how many concussions you gave? Uh, Ooh. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> How I many wish. concussions have you taken? Man, when I found out the reality of what a concussion is, I mean, it was it was a lot of football players up in the room. We were at this thing in Stanford. And when they told us, you know, like they put up the things on the board and they said what a concussion was, we were like, I got that shit. Like, oh, man. Oh, man. That's what a concussion is? Well... I probably had about a hundred of those then. Damn. Damn. You know what I mean? Damn. I mean, yeah. it's just, you know, and then really for me, it was more so in high school, like with the equipment, more so than it was the pros. Because in the pros, you know, you start kind of, you know, you're, I'm like an expert at like how I want to do it. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm not just, oh, you know, and then the guys in front of you are, you know, everybody's pretty much a professional. So everything is just kind of, what it is you know yeah versus high school you're gonna crazy guys gonna hit you you know what i mean diving mm-hmm. into the pile they're just they're just going <laughs> you know mm-hmm. but and the equipment yeah yeah you know because you're just sharing sharing for years and depending on where you're at and 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 it's, it's crazy when i think about it because i remember when i was younger in high school i would hit 
and I always want to hit hard and I would my vision would just be blurry but it would always come back in time enough for the next play so I just was like, oh, you so know, you were like, having concussions at that time. Oh yeah, you out there trying to get <laughs> stick marks on your helmet, huh? <laughs> right? <laughs> you, you know, but like it wasn't said to us like that. Then you remember it was this bell rung, like it was all yeah. these other terminology for Shaking it. And off. I'd be like, drink some water. I'm not hurting, so I'm cool. But then something like we could do this little. Um, the coaches had, you know, how you go knock on the door and sell candy and raise money, whatever. We had a liftathon or whatever. So I just was knocking all over the neighborhood, and I saw if you got first place, you got to either get keep keep your helmet or your shoulder pads. So I was like, man, I, I want one of them better helmets. You know what I mean? So I won't be like doing like that. So I was knocking everywhere, and I boom, I got second, and I was like, give me my helmet. And so I I still have that helmet to this day because it was like I needed the bike air helmet. The wow. air helmet, though. The air yeah, helmet. I had the double bladder. He was like, to, I want to keep my brain instead of my ass. shoulder. <laughs> oh, no. You know, I you know, gave the, everybody the... Yeah, I came with the big... Uh, you know, what with the big... Uh, what was your worst injury? My worst injury uh, was I tore my ACL hmm. in my last year. Well, I tore my ACL. Was that what, like, stopped your career? Basically. I mean, I hate saying that because the ACL, you know, I came back fine from that. But it's more of the stop at Cincinnati when you just have a new coach coming in and a new coach wanted to bring in his own regime anyway and then you know hurting your knee week 15 six months later is June Mm. so training camp is the next month so you know they say on TV you know like when guys get hurt they always tell the people the minimum time that it is to start getting back normal They'll say, oh, like, he broke his leg. He'll That's a six to eight week. Damn. It's like, no, it's yeah. six to eight weeks in the cast. <laughs> yeah. Right. Then he has to come out and be like an NBA or like an NFL player again. Like, you just don't get to come out that cast and <laughs> take off running. But you don't know that until you go through it, right? Because I'm, I'm in it as a fan, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, six months? Okay, cool. Man, that doctor said, okay, you're clear to run. I hopped on that treadmill at seven and a half. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, no. And that's when I looked and I said, uh-oh. You know what I mean? Like, I'm clear now. But but then at the same time, I didn't know how good I was because it was just normal for you. you just, I just hop on the treadmill, seven and a half, eight miles an hour warm up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I thought, hey, I'm clear to run. I could do the same thing. Right. And I was at five miles an hour, and that's when I, you know, that's the first time I looked at myself like, damn. You start feeling yeah. it? Yeah, so yeah, you must I was have like, to go through, like, therapy and stuff, right? Yeah, so then you're trying to press to get back, but time is just time. And then, you know, then there's the ego in me that wants to get back, so I go to Pittsburgh. But, you know, I'm about 85% of my normal self, and you're competing against everybody that's 100%. So you played Pittsburgh... The last two years? No, that's the year I went to Pittsburgh and I got cut from Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Okay. And how many years total? Six. Six yeah. years. Okay. Yep. And they just decided they were going to bring in new young kids at that point, huh? Yeah, and then and then all the rest of the teams in the league you just look at and you're like, mm, okay, I'm, I'm sitting at home and I'm like, the Raiders can't stop anybody. Um, <laughs> 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 Yeah. Y'all gonna bring Hire me in, me, right? you know? But <laughs> you know, and then you re- you know, guys reach out and talk to him, and they say, "Oh, you know, well, we don't know what kind of linebacker he is." Because at Cincinnati, I played all of them. I could play. What's your favorite team? My Niners. favorite, my favorite team was the Houston Oilers. So there is no more Houston Oilers. That franchise would be the Titans. But um, like, if you were gonna play again right now, who would you want to play for? Um. Like, what, oh, what team man. excites you the most? Like, who would you want to play with? I mean, right? me for who who I am and where, where I really like the league, it, it's it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, mm-hmm. It's funny because I'm an Oilers fan, but at that time of me being in college, being a coming in and being a linebacker, I studied. Like, I studied the game. Like, the game and the art of, like, football and the strategy itself, not just the player wise like Mm -hmm. I don't think I was as gifted as talented as a athlete more so like cerebral you know that's why I always strategically you would think you would fit with them and their team 
Oh best. yeah, yeah. Because like the the traditions that they have made up of defense and uh, schematically, and so Dick LeBeau was who I saw there, and so I think that my journey is just it's so crazy that that's who I was looking at when they had Greg Lloyd and Kevin Green and Damn. all those guys, Darren Perry at safety, and then when the Bengals called to get me, I was like, "Who's the D coordinator?" And they're like, "Dick LeBeau." And I'm like, no way. You know what I mean? Like, not <laughs> the not the coach that mm-hmm. I was looking at at Pittsburgh. Y'all are calling wanting me to come there. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah. Cool. You know, Dick <laughs> LeBeau's a D coordinator. I'm going. So, <laughs> even more so, not only just playing, it, playing in the National Football League, but I got to play in that defense that I wanted to play in that I saw in college that I liked. Nice. Just the, you know what I mean? Like, how, is that random or what? Yeah. The, yeah, that's crazy. Um, so what is uh, Adrian Ross doing now, the Mad Backer? So now, now I'm an agent. Um, you know, trying to trying to sign young guys, trying to trying to change the game, and trying to give them the knowledge to change the game because everything has been cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. And when I get it now, when you're coming out of college, they're used to being told what to do mm-hmm. by someone that has a title or their authority or whatever so when they come out and they look at like an individual and their whole lives or their whole recent life has been somebody wants me i'm good i was in high school i was good and all these colleges were telling me good stuff to come and get me yeah so mm-hmm. wait you're just giving me advice like you like you ain't giving me nothing though mm-hmm. right yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like oh like this agent's picking me up in a limo and so on and so forth and i'm doing that yeah, I'm not doing that because they're going to charge you for all that. <laughs> the game like, is to be sold. Like, think about the psychology mm-hmm. of that. They're gonna, they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna splurge oh, with your no, money no. on you, <laughs> and then, and then, and then you're gonna feel that they did something for you. Right, but they, they did. They made, well. they made reservations. So you're gonna <laughs> say game. with your money, man. You know what? You used all my money on me. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and hire you and pay you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm. That's what they're doing. And they're gonna but, drop you. but they don't know it, right? Yeah. And I know it because, like, I was there. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So I'm yeah. not just talking about them. So you're educating them, yeah. too. Yeah. But at the same time, what's hard about it is you have teachers, you have their coaches, you have all the same don't knows that think that they know. Mm-hmm. But because they were their coach at one time, or whoever's this, or whoever's the dad, or whoever's the smart guy that played football at one time that says that they know it seems like they know but they don't know you know but then us players former players that get to talking and even current ones if they were able to talk to them they would hear it Mm -hmm. you know but you got anybody right now like any kids right now that you we need to really look out for yeah um i don't really like to Put them out there out like it. that, you know. What I mean, yeah. Like I mean, no. I just have I have I have I have a guy that was on the Redskins, and uh, so he was injured. Um, a couple teams calling for him right now. Okay, he's a lineman. Um, yeah. How do you feel about the whole Colin Kaepernick and the taking the knee and politics involved in NFL? Um, I feel that the league and the leagues, the professional leagues, use. Um, use that platform to bring awareness on things so the fact that he wanted to raise awareness on a subject I felt that that should have been fine Mm -hmm. right and then it gets turned into something else because of how the cameras did it Mm -hmm. you know like he was doing it the whole time Mm -hmm. and then people all of a sudden were like (laughs) (coughs) excuse me I got water you grab him a water. People all of a sudden were like. Acting like it was new. Yeah. Like all of a sudden he just started like, doing it for attention or yeah, something. Yeah, like right. it's, it's 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 the TV that brought the attention to it. Mm-hmm. I thought Adrian got choked up. Like, <laughs> 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 You're about to cry a little bit. <laughs> it means a lot, man. <laughs> so why do you think nobody else picked him back up? Um, I mean, well, just going, 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 going back to it. So like when I played. We were in the locker room during the mm-hmm. national anthem. So all of a sudden it just turns to just be this 
super important thing because that's the megaphone that the National Football League has where that's not it. It's not about that. It's about the military paid you guys <laughs> to promote this. Oh, right. Fly over. So <laughs> you can understand when it's said that way. It's like, hey, wait a minute, guys. Like We're getting paid. So tell the players that because really they should understand that that's a part of their money. So if you yeah. understand that something's a part of your check, <laughs> you might decide when and how to go about it a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's all I'm saying. So it's kind of two things. It's like, hmm, it shouldn't have been nothing because he was raising awareness. Then when it became something else, it's kind of like, okay, well, if this is hurting in, in a certain way, in a certain manner, you know. And then the thing I really overall didn't like about it is he took the microphone away from himself. You know, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the quarterback is the guy on the team that gets the microphone in his face every day. So if I really want to raise awareness of something, I can continue to <laughs> do this and let them bring the microphone in my face. And I'm not saying that that when you th- I don't think that he went about it thinking that it was going to be something. He was just doing what he wanted to do. And I liked what he did. <clears throat> but when you when, when you when you continue to think about it, you know, for all the guys moving forward, it's like. Use the microphone. Yeah. Talk. Right. <laughs> so you don't think that was a smart move for him, how he played it. Mm. Or he could have played it differently. <laughs> There were some other pieces in there. I mean, you know, like, uh, I, 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 which I don't know why. I don't know why you opt out of your deal. You know, like, I'm not going to. Yeah, I don't have. I'm, still. I'm yeah, not going yeah. yeah. to have too. money on the table, and then I'm going to opt out without making them fire me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, m- money's there. Use that platform. Yeah. As long as you can, right? I mean, that that's that's how I look at it. You know. What's what's Adrian Ross doing now? Because I know over the years, shoot, I can't remember how many years it's been since I met you. I think you came out on a video shoot or something. We're just going to use one of your cars. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a <laughs> while. Well, what type of car were you going to use? <laughs> well, what type re- of car? Let's go. It might have been like a Charger or something back in the oh, day. Yeah, or, it probably was that that was a long time ago, man. We've been we've been around a long time. Um, but um, what's Adrian Ross doing now? This is it. This is it. I mean, I'm really, I'm really studying. I, I, I just set, I just, I started studying the system just like I did football. You know, like how mm-hmm. I just mastered. And I know how I knew defense. I just started setting up, and I said, okay, what, what, what is this entity? And I've, I found it. Like I found where to go and how to, how to change the game. Now I just have to get the message to the people. You know, right. and so um, are you I'm just still doing the people. celebrity basketball games and stuff? No, um, I did it a couple of years ago. I um, it was fun. Uh, I think when the Kings moved, and uh, you know that that was a little um, that was different. You know, what I mean, just having the tradition be there and then mm-hmm. going to a new spot. So I wanted to let them get settled in, but I think it, I think I think it might be uh, Brick coming back up next year. Okay. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you said that that's your thing, is it? Yeah, is basketball. basketball is your first. Yeah, so I said, hey, you know, I said, man, I like to play basketball. So what if I make an event, then I could go play. Yeah. Are right. you good at it? That's, that's, I'm just like Nike. You know, yeah. I just do it. Can we, <laughs> I just do it. Can we, can Come on, we, I just do it. I, I just get it done. Can we talk real quick about the Black Hefner? <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> oh man! Are we seeing him I everywhere? mean, I see you on the river with your boats and your and your women falling off the boats drunk, and your you, you know. You well, know. it's funny because <laughs> it's funny how fast time goes. Because now I'm not I'm not on black black and white status stuff at, at all. Um, well, but now at, you can be the Hefner because he's gone. So it's, yeah, the, hef, the Hefner. <laughs> hef. But but where where the black Hefner thing came up from was. I just I just use the vocabulary that that has been brought forth and I and I would use it on different platforms and just just to see the reaction of okay so what happens when it's said here right or like how I I was saying like the black Bill Belichick right because like to me I always see and there's always all these coaches that or the quarterbacks that like so say in my time Peyton Manning is so smart 
like like that's that's what you'd hear about them all the time is how smart they are. Yeah. Bill Belichick, all these guys that are so smart. And for me, I never I'm never hearing anyone that looks like me with the same thing being said about them. What did they say about Herm Edwards though? He speaks so well. Um, no. From Seaside, because didn't Herm Edwards coach in Seaside High School, I think? And, then and Herm don't look like me. Right. Uh, okay, I, I see what you mean. I mean, he's, <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he, he's close. Hey, well, okay, he's, I from mean, Seaside. he's from Seaside. I know he's, uh, uh, that whole thing um, out in the Bay, he's like a legend out there. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know or, what I mean? Or Monterey Bay, whatever. But um, so, what, so what chocolate skin coach... You know, I'll use those terms. Like, have you seen them say this? This is such a smart, brilliant coach. You know, there are Art Shale and, and, and oh, Art. No, nah, they wouldn't say about Art Shale. I mean, Art Shale was cool, but don't don't say like you know he he was all right for the Raiders. I'm a Raider fan, dude. So <laughs> no, you feel some type I, of way. I, I, yeah, I feel some type of way about Art Shale, bro. Um, but no, they're, they're actually you're, you're right. There aren't not in the NFL. Um, yeah. Um, and so or even in college. And so what I started seeing was just like okay. The Kardashians can say that, oh, I have ass and I'm fine, and everybody else is saying what they are. So for me, I'm dope as hell on knowing defense on football. There's nobody that can fuck with me with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just started announcing. I said if Belichick is the standard, but at the same time I'm knowing I'm not a head coach. So that's how you get it up in that industry. But it's like, but 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 I mastered the game as a player. So right. everybody else's standards of what someone can be and what they are doesn't make it be. And that's and that's the city. Someone else sets all these standards of who a coach can be and how you come in and all that. And that's just how it is. But that doesn't mean that someone isn't who they are. Going back to the draft picks. So do you see you, yourself becoming a coach at <clears throat> some point or even? Um, I do. Um, but it was, but maybe? just like I said, just because of like how the 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 entrance exam into. You know, it just takes the right situation. Um, it's just like how Steve Kerr just comes from the booth and goes straight to being the head coach of the Golden State Warriors, right? Like, mm-hmm. like there's not many people that do that process. And I'm not saying I would go straight to being a head coach, but it would be a situation, you know, to where I know that I know the game <clears throat> and that I know I have a whole lot of new stuff for the game. Um you know, because I think that that's what goes on up in the NFL right now is you have a lot of young offensive coordinators, and then there's a lot of old defense mm, yeah. strategy. Well, I think you'll figure it out, man. I mean, you did it since you were a little kid and figured your way all the way to the NFL, right? So exactly. I think you're going to continue <clears throat> to figure it out, and uh, we got to go because we're out of time, and our producer is over there screaming at us. <laughs> so, Dang, but we what, appreci- about, what about his questions? Oh, though? yeah. Can we get Demetrius's questions in real quick? We got a quick, quick we fire. Got some. Quick fire, man. First thing coming to your head, I'm going to give you two options. All right. Uh, Grillins or Smurfs? <laughs> Grim- Smurfs. <laughs> Smurfs. Smurfs. Yeah, because they throw water on you if you're grilling and shit. Yeah. Start popping out ugly. your back. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Um, would you rather have a pick six or a quarterback sack with a fumble recovery? Oh, pick six. You just want to dance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Steve Urkel or Carlton Banks? Urkel, baby. That's what? my little homie, Stefan Urkel. That's my lookalike. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> looking like Stefan. Like yeah. Stefan Urkel. Stefan Urkel. Urkel. Yeah. Urkel. That's my dude. All right. Dude, 90s hip hop. 90s hip hop or 90s R&B? Ooh. I'll go 90s hip hop. 90s hip hop. I mean, damn, the R and B is so good though. See, yeah, yeah that's a that's a hard I, question. I, it's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> rowdy Rowdy Piper or Rowdy Ronda Rousey? Oh, Rowdy Ooh. Piper. Rowdy Rowdy Rowdy. A- rowdy. NFL <laughs> NFL on Turkey Day or NBA on Christmas? Ooh, I think I got him on that one. I got him on that one. I'm stuck on that one. Yeah, it's like both. I got TiVo. <laughs> uh, I'd have to probably go f- football on those days. One of those days? All right, my last one. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go any given Sunday or the program. Ooh. Oh, classic though. Those Boy, I'm nice with good. these questions. <laughs> <laughs> Demetrius with the questions. I, I think, damn, those both. Those Omar are both, Epps. But those are both perfect movies of what they did and what they were doing it to. Because college and the pro. And then Friday Night Lights will fall in third place. 
Because then you got I'd all levels go, of it, right? I'd have to go. I'd have to go program. Will it be program? Program. program. program? Halle Berry, you know. Yeah, Damn. classic. Damn, Damn that's, that's right. Omar Evans did have Halle Berry. Yeah. All right. That, that was sad. The linebacker <laughs> broke his leg, though, too. We appreciate yep. you coming out tonight and uh, joining us. We got to go because we are way out of time. Yes, yes. But, you know, come back. Definitely. Let's do it again. Definitely. Let's do it again. Okay.